All right, so um, good morning from this side of the country. Um, it's eight nineteen a.m. on a Friday morning. So um, good morning. And of course, as you know, it's your trader King Wesley speaking. So today we're going to be talking about inducement. All right, I told you guys in the previous class that we are going to talk about inducement in a whole video. Of this form. So today is that day, all right? Now, inducement, inducement, inducement. What is inducement? All right. So now um, inducement is um you can see inducement is a is liquidity with a twist, all right. It's more like first of all, let us try to break down the word inducement. Now, when you hear inducement, when you're being induced, when something is being induced, when you have an inducement, all right, it's basically more like you are being lured or you are being deceived just for the purpose of clarification. Let me let me let me let me let me search on my Google right now and read the meaning of inducement to you. Um it said a thing that persuades or leads someone to do something. Okay, so basically inducement is kind of like you being deceived to do something. Okay, it this looks like it, but it is not it. And that is what we are talking about in trading, all right? So, inducement is basically what looks like your entry, but it is not your entry. <laughs> uh, okay. And then also, um, inducement can be liquidity with, you know, with kind of twist, all right? Now, you should also know that inducement is what makes your trade move in your direction, all right? It enables your trade move in your direction. Now, inducement is also liquidity. But inducement is not inducement without an entry. So where we see an inducement, we want to see an entry. You feel me? So when we see an inducement, we want to see an entry. There is no inducement without an entry. If there is what you think is an inducement and there is no entry, then, hey, it is not an inducement. All right? Now, first of all, one very broad characteristic about inducement is that inducements are deceptive. Those ones are 100%, all right? Inducements are deceptive, okay? Now, they deceive you to think that they are the actual entries. Like I said before, um, inducements are more like deceiving you to think that while it is not, okay? So, inducements are deceptive. They deceive you to think that they are the actual entries. Now, look at inducement as weeks, all right? In most cases, we want to look at inducement as weeks, okay? Now, these are not just weeks, but then they are weeks that are close to entries, okay? For example, we want to call them liquid weeks, all right? Liquid weeks. Now, liquid weeks are weeks that are very close to your entry. They could just come, a week could just appear, and then a little bit above your week is where you expect your entry. I'm going to show you an example here, guys. I'm going to show you an example on chat. Or I don't know, should I explain this example right now? Or should I just go on? No, I just said something now, guys. All right. I said liquid weeks is an inducement that is very close to your entry. And of course, now this is the live chat, and we have something like this on the screen right now. Okay, let me just, of course, this is a mentorship class. So let me explain. From H4, how did I come about this setup? Let me go. Let me start from the daily. Let me start from the daily. All right now, from the daily, you go see that okay. Um, price um initially or originally is on a downtrend. If you look closely, we're on downtrend. All right, so this was just some kind of retracement, blah blah blah, and then price is selling. So even if price will not sell downwards, at least we will see price still sell. At least we'll see price still sell to maybe somewhere around here, okay? At least, even if price will not sell so much, we shall are expecting price to sell somewhere around here, okay? So now, since I'm looking for sales, I go down to my H4. Let's see, okay, H4 did not give me much details. I go down to my H1. Now, on H1, what did I notice? We have buy side liquidity taking, all right? This week that went above this high, buy side liquidity taking. 
this low got broken over here. So it means we are looking for shorts right now, All right? Let's go down to my M15. Let's look at the structure. Let's break down the structure. All right, so we have buy side liquidity taking over here. This is internal liquidity, guys. You see what I'm what I was talking to you guys about what about internal and external um, liquidity. Now let me let me explain those things here. Now this is my trading range. Maybe I should make the colors in red or yellow. No, let me make it in. Yes, yeah, that is visible enough. Now this is my trading range. Now this is my trading range, guys. You can see buy side liquidity got taken over here. If you use the Fibonacci, of course, you're going to see that we are at 100%, all right? So we, we basically should be looking for sales from this region, all right? Take out the Fibonacci. Now, what we have to do is we have to analyze the internal structural movement right now, okay? So we have what? This is, this is, a, this is internal liquidity. This is internal liquidity taken over here, all right? We have this buy side liquidity over here taken as well. And then try it what? We had a market structure shift over here all right let me let me just annotate that properly we had a market structure shift over here mss where is my mss Market structure shift, all right? Let me get that. So we had a market structure shift over here, all right? Now, originally, you should understand that this is your M15 time frame. So lots of hidden details are over here. So me, personally, I will dive down to my M3, my three minutes time frame, all right? Now, diving down to my three minutes time frame, you understand that if you were on chart, you will have gotten an M3 over here. But nevertheless, we already have an, we already had an initial market structure shift. Now, this is it over here. Previous high taking, all right. Previous high taking over here. Market structure shifts. Let me just copy this back. Market structure shift over here also, all right. So basically now you understand that we've had more details on a smaller time frame. That is how, that's why I basically like to, you know, go down small time frame sometimes, okay? Now, talking about inducement. Now, you see how we've seen how we've added the liquidity metrics, the liquidity, the idea of external and internal range liquidity, the idea of, um, you know, the 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 previous, the buy side and sell side liquidity also, all right? The string high and all those shit. Now, talking about inducement, I told you that inducement in most cases are weeks that are very close to your entry. Now, seeing this setup, where do you think I'm going to take my entry? Of course, this fair value gap over here, all right? I'm going to look to trade at this fair value gap over here. I'll look to trade at this fair value gap over here. Now, that is my entry. Now, you see this week over here? You see this week? Yes, we caught it. That is an inducement. That is an inducement, guys. This is a liquid week. This is liquid week. This is an inducement. So basically, this high spot is this high spot inducement, all right? Now we know that this we know that this is an inducement. All right. Now, how do I trade this inducement? Now, instead of putting my analysis, um, sorry, my entry on this fair value gap, I'll just put it on the inducement because price might tap into the inducement and miss my entry and leave me on the fair value gap. So I'll just you know put it on, on the on the inducement and then my stop loss above this high, and I'm good, and I'm gonna wait for, to see what price is going to do. All right. Now, from this point now, price has still formed another liquidity over here. Price has formed another liquidity over here. But I don't care whatever price forms here. All I know is I'm going to take my entry from here. All right. So basically now, this is an inducement. All right. So let's go on with the classes. I'm not like explaining live charts right, right now. I want to teach you guys inducement. And I believe you're already learning. So um, like I said before, a recap of what I said last sentence I made um while I was okay while I was reading I said a liquid week is an inducement that is very close to the entry and we saw a live example on the charts here okay now this is a liquid week which is very close to my entry okay now um 
uh, when when expansion happens, okay, you should target mitigations, breaker blocks, and failure swings. Right now, for example, now let me see. When I talk about exp expansion, I also mean displacement. Okay, I also mean displacement. For example, when we see something of this sort, of this sort, I mean, when something like this, okay, let me see. Price seems to be going up, going up, going up, and then we have something like this. We have something like this, and then a huge expansion comes like this, or a huge displacement. Boom. Okay, with this very huge momentum. Now, it would be crazy for price to come back to maybe your other block here or your fair value gap here, all right? No, it will really be crazy because it's not 100% of the time you're going to see 100% um, retracement, okay? You're not going to see 100% retracement on all, all the time. So what we're going to be looking for right now in cases like this is maybe a breakout block. Now, a breakout block will be another topic. We'll have a video on its own, but then a breakout block is most, is most like a failed other block, all right? Now, let me give you an instance. Let me, let me first of all explain something, okay? Now, when we have, when we have something of this nature, okay? When we have something of this nature, um, okay? Now, you know that we have another block somewhere around here. Uh, another block definitely forms around here that so was able to push, push price above this previous high. All right. Now, so price broke above. Now, this other block, we anticipate that when price taps into it, price will go bullish. All right. But then, in some cases, you see price break sweetly um, through it with huge straight candlesticks, leaving the other block unreacted to. Now, that other block becomes a breaker block because, in some cases, you can use that other block for entries. Now, how do you use that other block for entries? You will notice that you often see price do something like this. Price will come back to that other block, which has which, which we now refer to as a breakout block, tap into it and then sell, all right? So basically now, my explanation here is that when you see price give you huge expansions like this, do not expect price to come back up above here. Price might, but price would not immediately come back to it. So in most cases, you want to use your breakout block, all right? When price taps into it, and then you want to see price go down from your breakout block, all right? So that is basically what you do when you see huge expansions or huge displacement in price. Don't, don't, be, don't be looking for sniper entry and say, yo, I want to wait for price to go back up here. Yes, price might actually go back up here. In short, let me just give you a breakdown of what price might likely do. Okay, price will go down to your, your breakout block, Move, right, do the move from there, go back, even do another move, then you know, do some structure, structure, structure. After it has built plenty of liquidity, then price can now grab the liquidity and then finally go back to your maybe your, mit your mitigation block or your fair value gap over there, and then finally sell from there. But bro, all this time you've been waiting over here, weeks, months has passed. All right, so that was uh. That was something important I just shared, all right? Now, um, we'll actually have a whole video on breakout block also, okay? Now, there is no inducement without an entry close by. I want you to take very good close, a very good note of that, all right? Now, change of trend occurs in two ways. Change of trend occurs in two ways. This is something I want to also pitch in, all right? Change of trend occurs in two ways. Price will sweep liquidity and then break structure. Let me explain or let me let me illustrate. Price will sleep, sweep liquidity and then break structure. When we have something of this sort, uh yeah, and then okay, so take a good look at this. We have sell side liquidity taking market, okay, sell side liquidity taking over here. Market structural break. Of course, you know we have liquidity over here, and then in most cases, price will come back here, and then boom, we have a complete change of trend from here. So, price swept liquidity, market structure shift, or you want to say market structure break, 
price builds up liquidity over here, price comes to grab it, and then boom, we move. All right. So basically, I want you to understand this. Now, something about inducement is that you should not consider an inducement valid if it does not break a higher low. I said this in the previous video, and it's very important. Now, let us go over to the live chat so you understand what I meant by you shouldn't consider an inducement valid if it does not break a high or a low. You actually see it clearer on one minute time frame. You see this inducement, it broke this low. This inducement that formed here broke this low. This inducement that formed there, it broke this low. So this inducement is a valid inducement. Okay, because this inducement broke this low. So it is a it's a valid inducement. We can use it as entry. We can we can acknowledge it. All right. When there is a when there is a sharp or fast reversal in market, it simply means that most others have left have been left behind. So that particular area is like a magnet. It usually drags price down to place to places. Okay. It usually drags price down to that place to clear off remaining others. Then go again. Let me um let me explain what I just I just read now. Of course I of course I had a note for this class so that I wouldn't forget every information I want to share. I have a note for all my classes so that I can effectively deliver. Now I said when there is a sharp or fast reversal in market, it's basically what I explained earlier about expansion. Okay, I said when you have a fast displacement or expansion, when you have price do something like this, and then you have this boom. All right, now this is a fast displacement. This is a fast expansion. Now when you have this in market, all right, when you have this in market, okay, basically lots of orders, lots, lots and lots of orders have been left on top around here. All right, so. What the market does is that these orders that have been left on top, this liquidity that is around here, or the orders around here, is acting as a magnet, all right? It, it attracts price. You, you then begin to see price do something like this, okay? Now, price, it will attract price, price will tap into the orders, and then price will continue to move. So whenever I see, you see huge displacement in market, let me see, let me show you what a huge displacement is. Most times, it's mostly empowered by news. Exactly, now, this is a huge displacement. This is a huge displacement in price. No, lots of orders are hanging over here. Lots of orders. And in time to come, all right, you can see price is gradually going up, going up. So in time to come, price will come back to mitigate these orders, all right? Those are huge displacements. Let me see if I can find them all. All these things are huge displacements in the market, all right? So price definitely, you can see this huge displacement, price still went up and then tapped into some orders and then went down again. So that is how this market actually works, all right? Now, do not also forget that there is no inducement without an entry, all right? Yeah, there is no inducement without an entry. So I believe it, we've really shared lots of this in these videos. Now I want you to go and practice, okay? Now your assignment is you actually go on your chart, try to identify inducement, okay? Try to identify inducement. I can also give you some um diagram, some diagrams as examples of inducement, all right? Let me give you some diagrams as an example of inducement. You can have something of this sort, of this, of this nature. Something like this. Okay, let me. Now, this is an inducement. Okay, and then you have tried something like this. Okay, so now this is an inducement. So this is this is just one diagram out of many, all right? But then with what you've learned from from, from induction, uh, from I think induction, ah, God, from what you from what you've learned from inducement, all right. I want you to go go on your chart, all right, and then and then um try to not try, I need you to actually do it. Try to identify inducement. Okay, go on your chart, identify inducement, and then um send it to the group and I'm going to review it. All right. I told you guys that this this trade was vision liquidity over here, and you can see it wants to try to go up and grab the liquidity. So that is how the market all works. But nevertheless, am I gonna sell from here? No, I don't think so. Now, am I gonna use this breakout block as an entry? I wouldn't want to use a one minute breakout block though. So I'm just gonna to stick to my 15 minutes time frame and I'm just gonna view this from 15 minutes time frame, all right? You see, price has even grabbed liquidity. Price have grabbed liquidity already. So that's, that's all for today, guys. It's King and I'm signing out.